I believe it was Pierce County, maybe uh, somewhere in Third Avenue corridor where we designated those funds would be spent. Okay, before we take our next um, person, if you're in line and have not had a chance to ask a question, we'd like to get those folks, give those folks a chance to ask at least one question because our time is running out. I think we have about five more minutes, ten minutes tops to uh, get to the question. If you have not had a chance to ask a question, I'm sorry, I apologize. Speak into the mic. The one thing I heard you say no to, and you were strong about, was the fact that we were in an emergency, and no to the fact that we don't have any police or any other police to put on out here in the streets. So my question to you guys is, you always say um, public involvement, get involved, you know, call, help us out. What does that mean to you when you, when you say for us to call you guys um, to help you guys out, to help your own community. Just what does that mean to you? Because I think the majority of us do that, and we still don't get any feedback. Um, most of these houses that were scrapped were not done in the dark. They were done in broad daylight with everybody watching because these guys knew just what you said. We don't have any money. We don't have any police. So if we keep putting this out in the air to them, you know, most of us, you know, are taxpayer citizens that's in here, but we put this information out to those that are doing these crimes. We don't have any help. Every house on my street that was scrapped, I called. Six o'clock in the morning, you know, we're out here, we're trying to do our job by calling. No one comes. So, what do we do? What does that mean to you when you get on TV and say, we want you to help us? Help you do what? Okay, good question, Billy. Really. What, what I can say, and I want to clarify, I, I didn't say we can't have more police officers. We want more police officers. We have to figure out where that funding can come from. What I said, I think, is that we'll aggressively pursue, now especially with the state opportunity, to add public safety folks, and uh, out of the Obama administration, we'll pursue those federal funds. In terms of your participation, I think there are ways that the community policing program wants to work with neighborhood watch organizations with block clubs and that's to me that's the, the key way to be involved around the public okay safety. that's my question what do you do when we do this uh chief do you, can, can you answer that Hi, this is Jim Scroviero. We're here at Skid Marks Raceway. We're here racing our slot cars. It's made in Flint, and we're proud of it. Hi, I'm Councilman Michael Sargentson, and I want to encourage everyone to come out Tuesday, February 28th, 6 p.m. at Nethercutt School to the 8th Ward Emergency Manager Meeting. Here you will be able to ask questions, give your opinions, and be a part of the solution. Please show up Tuesday, February 28th at Nethercutt School. Be a part of the solution Tuesday, February 28th at 6 p.m. And remember, Flint is a great place to make better.
forfeited from scrappers. You know, there's there's so many scrappers that we can't get all the scrappers, but when you call about a scrapper, we probably already got one in under arrest already. So we are addressing the scrappers, but you know, we have limited resources also. We have scrappers, we have uh, vehicles that Officers that are on scrapping squads, first, second, and third shift, and they are arresting scrappers 24 7. So we are addressing the scrappers. Now, you may not think that we are, but you know, the evidence is that we are taking cars every single day. The last thing is where, where there's no order, you have chaos. So, what, what you guys are showing us in this city, even with you aboard, and we can't blame you because you've just been here since December, but evidently there's no order downtown. Somebody's not doing something downtown because a city of this size, what these, these thugs are doing, what they're doing in broad daylight, they're having shootouts in broad daylight. There's no way in the world that they are afraid of you. They're not afraid of you, Mr. Locke. They're not afraid, period. Because what they hear is what we hear on TV when you get on TV and say there's no money for police. That's what they hear too. First of all, Mr. Brown, thank you very much for these meetings. My name is Diane Murrell. I was born in this town. I've lived in various states. And I'm proud to be from Flint. And when I talk to people in Louisiana about the can-do spirit of Flint, or when I talk to my son-in-law, who is environmental manager for the city of St. Paul, Minnesota, he says, well, Flint is the city that made the middle class. So I'm proud to be from Flint. I expect good things. But we have a precious resource that in these three meetings has not been identified. And it grieves me terribly that we don't, we seem to concentrate on our copper, our water, our rights. We have a large disenfranchised population of children. Am I correct? The number of the homeless is 3,300, or is it higher than that now? And how many of those are children? I am trying to be part of the solution. I'm usually down at the county jail counseling with women as a volunteer chaplain. And I, I want to be here and there also. I think of children that are living uh, in some mother's friend's basement until that mother's friend is tired of them being there because uh, all they have is food stamps. They don't have any assistance. So they go from that home to another one, to another one, changing schools, eliminating uh, excess baggage until I can pack up all their possessions in my car as I help them. I know there are no family shelters. There are no family shelters. A friend of mine, whose friend was, was uh, evicted, could find no place for this family. It drove them to Ohio, and there again, of course, they found shelter, but they had to be supported. We have few, fewer than we need, women and children's shelters. I say that a city with a can-do spirit that I know the city has and the compassion, the heart of Flint, which I know is still there, but we're getting so off-center and we're not looking at our best resources are these children and I'm a big sister and a jail chaplain, I work at Eastside Mission. I would like to know, is there some way that these many buildings we have in Flint can be turned over, say, to Tom Knight, who's, I believe, head of the Coalition for the Homeless, 
so that instead of him buying up houses and rehabbing them, which he's doing now, uh, that the churches could provide shelters for families out of these buildings, which the school or the city is maintaining, and there is some heat in them, and there is water in them, on and on and on. Is there something that can be done? Uh, again, I think the city can't solve all these problems, but what I can say, you know, we would work with, uh, you know, you have organizations like the Shelter of Flint, you've got the United Way, uh, you've got several human service agencies in our community that are very helpful and viable, but there are many more children who are homeless than we can serve, I understand that. But uh, you're raising a critical issue uh, in how we uh, deal with children who are homeless is a, is a critical issue in our community, and that's all I can say is, again, our team will work with you, but we have to do it in partnership with the total community, especially those that uh, operate the human service agencies. Well, if I can be any part of the solution, I want to be. Okay. Flint has taught me to do that. Okay, I would say communicate again with Dawn on that, give us your name, and maybe we can uh, steer you to some folks who are addressing uh, especially the issue of homeless children. Okay, thanks. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Um, my name is Paul Herring. I'm a resident of the Fifth Ward and self-appointed cheerleader for Carriage Town. I read uh, your emergency manager order number 10 that, uh, that allowed for these meetings. It said that the meetings are going to take place on a monthly basis, but yet still there's no schedule beyond March 1st. Well, let me, let me clarify. I think what it said is the city count, the meeting with the city council was going to take place once a month. Uh, these meetings, again, I wanted to get out into the community right now early. We will do more of these later in the year, but it, it is not possible for me to do these once a month, but we are going to do the meeting with the city council once a month. That's the answer I wanted to hear because we can't afford to have you at meetings like this <laughs> every month. But as I as I read it, I got the impression that there were going to be, that is being reorganized, that instead of the council meetings taking place at the council, that each council person was to have a meeting within their ward on a monthly basis to communicate with their constituents and then thusly they would communicate those issues to you. Now, what I'm hearing you say is that you will have meetings eventually, randomly, 